Hello everyone, it's Sylvia here from Casino Library and welcome to Tangles on Tuesday. In this series, we're going to take you through the process of creating beautiful art pieces known as Zantangle. Hello everyone and welcome back to Tangles on Tuesday. I hope you've had a great week since we caught up last. Two new tangles for you today, so let's get started. So the first tangle I have for you today is called Nymph. And Nymph is based on the Enzeppel tangle that we learnt a few weeks back. So to get started, we're going to draw up our grid. So working on my practice sheet and my practice time, I'm going to do a grid. Uh, I'm going to have some waves in my line because I like that feel of movement rather than lines being completely straight. So we're going to go horizontal and vertical to start. And then we're going to pass through the diagonal for each of these. And again, I'm going to follow the curve of my lines and just filling in on the diagonal. So we're passing through the diagonal in one direction and then passing through the diagonal on the other. Remember just to keep turning your sheet so that you've got it in a position that's comfortable for you. So what we're doing now is by passing through the diagonals, we are creating some loose looking triangular shapes. Same as we did with our end apple. Once we've done that, we're going to start filling in each of these spaces. We're going to fill in with what ends up looking something like pebbles. So we're rounding the corners. So trying to draw a circle within that space and rounding the corners as we go. Exactly the same way as it was when we created our end sample. So get this one finished off, this section here. We end up with a little star formation in the center of what I call petals because nymph is going to look just like that, like a flower, once we're finished with it. Whereas in Zample, we would have continued this process through our working area and then perhaps a little shading and that would have been our end Zample done. So that's what that looks like once you've gone through and drawn your circles with your rounded corners in each of those sections. So we end up with these star centers here, which are the center of our flowers. So I'm going to refer to these as petals. So each of these has eight petals. There's a flower here, here, a star center here, here, here. You can see them all through there as opposed to these areas that have a small cross in them. I'm looking for this star center with the eight petals around it because our next step is to work from the center of each petal and we're going to gently draw in some lines coming from the center and I'm going to give mine a very slight curve, just ever so gentle and it will give the effect of movement and as if that flower is just gently moving as opposed to straight lines which can keep it very stiff and formal looking. So I'm going to start with this one. Here's my centre star and I'm just going to gently add in some lines with that petal. Now you can add as many lines as you like you can add more you can add less and we're going to do that with each petal so coming around to this one 
coming up just a gentle curve that's working up from the center of that petal and again just taking your time now this one you can see I'm rotating my my card each time and that will also ensure that I've got my lines going in the right direction I won't end up with one petal that looks like it's upside down or something crazy so just gently don't have to press hard with your pen just gently and adding in those lines to each petal so they're radi radiating out from the center of the petal at the base that will also give some nice dark lines happening you can see as I'm working around because my lines starting from the same spot each time from the center I've got this natural looking shading happening as well it's just going around each petal so as I said eight petals in all in this flower no need to press hard just just holding the pen loosely just firm enough so that you've got control but not at all pressing hard on that card at all just following the petal around and there you are that is my first one done that's Nim. Now the next flower, I could work this one as a whole flower or this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the appearance of them overlapping because this is my next star sh shape or centre of my next flower. So what I will end up with is I'll be working with six petals instead of eight same i same process starting at the star the center and drawing those lines so the lines are fanning out from the center on each petal just a slight curve on them and that's going to give the appearance of this flower sitting in behind the first one that we did and just bringing them around and this one just gently curving you have your lines close together you can have them further apart whatever you prefer and just keep turning and working each one like that working from the the center here the bottom of the petal out and by doing that that will create that natural looking shading at the base of the petals one more to go So you can see there that this flower has the appearance of being tucked in behind this one. This, here's our star center of our next flower. Again, working with six petals, it's going to have the same effect. It's going to look like it's tucked in behind this one. Sometimes what I like to do is just go over the outline of each petal just to make it a bit more distinct. Go over it a couple of times just to bring those petals to life a little more. 
just really make each individual one stand out. It doesn't take much at all. So what we'll do, is I'm going to work this one now, so it will show you what that looks like. So again, working from the center out. So working from the star, which is the center of our flower, and turning our cardstock, and just the gentlest curve on those lines. It doesn't take much at all. So there you are. We've got three of them done now. We have our full flower with the eight petals, and these two have the appearance of being tucked in behind this one here. So we could work another full flower here, or here or here wherever you choose to and we'll take a look at how that looks when it's finished now I've gone ahead and filled in all of my my petals with lines so this is the first flower I started off with with the eight petals then this one tucked in behind with six petals this one tucked in with six petals and each time you look at tucking one in it'll it will have six petals until we get Back up to this corner here where my flower had four petals and I've gone over each of the petal outlines just to bring them um, bring them up a little bit more so you may be wondering what to do with these partial petals around the edges well you could simply shade that if you wanted to or the other thing you could do is to look at what's happening across here these were all star centers so over here would be another star center and with their lines working out from the center I would add my lines in there doing just that so based on the center of my star being here I would work my lines out from that imaginary center so they would work in there like that same goes for this one so I can work my lines as if the center were roughly here and working those lines into my petal so let's just do that yeah it doesn't have to be exact yeah, so that's filled that in here the next center working upwards would be up here so I would imagine that my petals would be coming off either this center here or this one here whichever you choose I'm going to work them back in that way just for the contrast so I've worked them in there and the same here I'll treat my next center as if it was up here and I'll work my petals in going this way and back this way working out imagining where that next flower would be and its center and hey it doesn't matter what you do it's going to look great so there you go so that is nymph now these small spaces here we could color or we could color the centers of our flowers or we could just leave it like it is again no right or wrong it's simply a matter of personal preference because i don't have a lot of these um, spaces so i'm not talking about the centers of my flowers which are these but these other couple of small spaces here i really only have it looks like I really only have the one so to color it might look a bit odd I might just leave it as it is so that there for you is nymph the second tangle I'm showing you today is called braid and using my pencil I'm just going to draw in think of it as a string going to draw in um, the area within which we'll be working this particular tangle in 
So I like to think of this one as, as the word suggests, a braid, a hair braid. And what we're going to do is with our string as our guide, we're going to draw two lines gently curving up as I have here. And the next set of lines are going to come not quite halfway, just show the midpoint and curving down. So we're creating the look of, of our braid. So this next one, and again starting wherever you're comfortable, midpoint or just shy, it's really up to you. There will be no right or wrong. And just repeating that process as we work along this area. I'm just working your way down to the bottom like that. Don't worry about trying to get it exact. There is no exact science with our Zentangle. I'm going to pop in one more there. Okay. So that gives us the, the basic framework with which, within which we're going to work. So think of this as your plait or your braid in your hair. In each section, we're going to work some lines. I'm going to try and avoid working them too straight. I'm actually going to start by putting in a gentle curve and closing in this end here. Just as I have there. And I'll do that each time I start working on a section. So this next section, I'll start with a gentle curve just to close that in. And what I'd like to do is just a couple of curved lines, not curved too sharply, just gentle. And I've left a couple of breaks in the line, which gives the uh, feeling of sparkle or reflection which is something a technique we did when we were doing our print temps tangles, you may remember. So these lines working towards the middle are curving this way. These lines, as I work towards the middle, I'm going to curve the opposite way. Just gently, just gentle enough. You don't want too many lines, don't want it to be too busy, but that's that section done. So this will be the same, I'll start a few gentle curves, curving in, curving them back that way and working towards the centre. These curves will curve with their back to this side, working towards the middle. You may even find it easier to just work a centre line and then bring in those, those lines, whatever works for you. It may take a little while to get the hang of the braid, of the braid tangle, but with a little bit of practice you'll get there. And just working our way through each section. So again, we're going to close in this end. It's just a gentle curve. And a couple more lines. If you don't want to do the broken line to keep 
that sparkle effect that's entirely up to you you don't have to it's just giving you a few ideas of what you can do with that tangle so you can see we're working our way down here and we'll continue that until we reach the bottom so now that I've worked my way along the full length of my working space you can see that effect that you get just gently curving your lines in towards the center of each section and leaving some breaks between your lines adds that lovely sparkle effect or effect of reflection taking my pencil can add a little bit of shading under each just a little, little bit of shading under those initial lines that we drew in add a bit more depth don't want too much because we know it will spread when we use our uh, blending tool so I've just added in some soft pencil under each of these lines here so just taking my blending tool and just gently blending that through gives a nice softness and some nice depth to our tangle it doesn't take much just to add that in there so you can see that's how it looks finished now what we can do I've taken braid to the edges of my working tile I'm just going to grab my pencil and draw in a second a second um, space to work in my other braid I just want to show you now if you wanted to you can bring that to a point and what I'm going to do is let this finish here just grab my point one and work in those lines for our braid I just want to show you how to or another way that you can finish off the end of your braid if you want to have it coming to an open space rather than coming to an edge now my space is getting quite small so that becomes quite tight as we move towards the tail that's fine what I'll do is just work in this um, top section what I want to show you is when I come to here I'm going to just lightly patch in some strands thinking of hair coming out the end of the braid it doesn't have to be much as much or as little as you like And then so it can be quite tight it can be loose whatever you like the look of and then thinking of just adding to that perhaps small little dot or if you want to the feeling of um, hair with a curl you might just do a little curl out to the side just to add that 
bit of interest to it. No, you don't have to. It's just to show you another way. Another way that you could finish that off and make it perhaps look more like something a bit more um, organic, a bit more freeform. It's whatever you like to do. You could pop little circles through these lines here. You could embellish those if you wanted to. Entirely up to you what you want to do with that. Or you could shade them. You can do anything that you want to because this is your tangle. And as we know, there are no mistakes. There are no rights from wrongs. There are no rules. So you could, in fact, just add those in if you wanted to, just for a bit of effect. Just play with it. But we can all our tangles. They lend themselves to so many opportunities. What I would perhaps do in this very bottom section is I think I'll just shade that in because it is quite a, a small area to try and work in our our, our lines it's up to you you can work in a few very fine lines and that just gives you another way that you can um, work with your tangle and add a little bit extra to it if you wish to certainly don't have to it'll depend on your piece that you're working on but instinctively you will know where you're going with your tangle and what you want to add to it. So that's another fun tangle for you. So that for you there is braid and our first tangle today was nymph. So last week we were looking at what happens when you just can't seem to get a tangle to happen and I suggested trying just simply drawing lines and these are some of the tiles that we worked on that I showed you during that that particular session I left you with a challenge tile this one here and remembering that a string is just a guide as you can see with these ones I've added lots of other strings as I went and that's what I did with last week's challenge tile this is what I came up with this one here so I did add lots of other string lines as I went and you can see that it's it's quite different to the ones that we did last week again no two tangles will ever turn out the same and I chose to highlight the center of each area where I'd been drawing my lines that was just what uh, stood out to me what appealed to me and that's what I came up with. I found it very, very addictive, very relaxing. Time passes so quickly. And this being Mental Health Awareness Month is a great time for us to find something that slows our mind and lets us relax. Another one I did because I found I couldn't stop was this one here, which I'm quite liking as well. They're just very very free form very organic there's nothing structured about it i just went with the flow and as you can see it's very different to the first one i did with our challenge tile from last week so that's what i came up with i do hope that you're enjoying the series that you're having a go at these challenges next week will be our 20th week of tangles on tuesday and I'm putting together a giveaway. So please do share our Tangles on Tuesday with your friends. Subscribe to our channel. And look forward to sharing some more ideas with you next week. Now, what's this week's challenge string look like? So here's your challenge child for this week. And I brought in this area here where you might like to practice your braid tangle. And, of course, if you can work in our other tangle today, which is nymph, somewhere in that tile. And 
and any other tangles that you would like to include. So have fun with that and I look forward to seeing what you come up with when we meet again next week. In the comments below you'll find a link to the practice sheet that I've been using here today. You'll also find a link to this week's challenge tile. If you're unable to access these from your computer at home, we'll make some packs available. All you have to do is give us a call on 666 and give us a day or two to get those ready for you. That pack will also include some pre-cut three and a half by three and a half inch tiles to get you started. And remember, if you'd like to receive instant updates when new content is added to our YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for joining us here today and we'll see you next week for another Tangles on Tuesday.